Hey guys, my name is Todd Derry. This is TD's Fat to Fit, your free online strength and conditioning coach in your pocket. Today we're going to continue with our peptide library series. We're going to talk about dihexa. But before we get into anything, please like, subscribe, comment below, but please hit that subscribe button. Help me grow this channel. Dihexa seems to be a pretty remarkable compound. This is a cognitive brain supplement, so to speak, and I want to do a deep dive on what this stuff is all about. Seems too good to be true, but if you told me about BPC-157, another very popular peptide, I would say that's too good to be true. You can take a bath in it without any toxicity, and yet it can heal a joint injury in seemingly days, if not a week, which you can be laid up for months and have a lot of pain and issues and you take BPC-157 and the, the peptide heals many different uh, joint injuries in literally no time. So let's do a little deep dive on dihexa. It seems to have a lot of potential benefit for Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, and potentially could be a uh, game changer for those that want to be a biohacker and try to improve their cognition and intelligence and learning capabilities. But first, as you know, I'm not a doctor. Cops be pulling up like I'm passing out drugs. Nah, nah, nah. I'm a bodybuilder, not a doctor. This is for education and entertainment purposes only. This is just my experience, my life over 35 years of being a coach and a trainer for countless athletes from 17 years old to 75 years young, men and women alike, bodybuilders, physique athletes, strength athletes, you name it, I've coached them. I've also been an IFBB Physique America judge, chairman of New England and a promoter. So I've seen the business side of this fitness industry and I've been a competitive bodybuilder since I was 17 and all the way up until a last couple of years. So I've, I've walked the walk and talked the talk, so to speak. And I'm trying to give back, give you some of my knowledge and help you become the best version of yourself possible without reinventing the wheel and getting you that that body and that mind as quick as possible using the compounds that I've used, that I have experience with, and maybe it'll help you, maybe it won't, but at least we'll learn something in the meantime. So let's get into it. Let's talk about dihexa. But please, in the meantime, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it very much. So we're gonna talk about the discovery, the history of it, when it was discovered, uh, the mechanism of action, current clinical data, which is really not much, legal status, always going to talk about the FDA and their input, positive side effects, negative side effects, dosing protocols, and then we'll talk about my final thoughts. So it was discovered in and around 2012 by uh, Dr. Harding. He's a researcher out of Washington State University. It's an oligopeptide from derived from angiotensin 4. It does cross the blood-brain barrier, and some of the data out there is with an oral form of dihexa called NDX 1017. As we remember, the angiotensin 4 is a hormone which influences blood pressure, kidney function, and also has a dramatic effect on uh, the brain function with acetylcholine. So part of the mechanism of action is it affects acetylcholine in the brain. What is acetylcholine? It's a neurochemical neurotransmitter. It's released by neurons to communicate with other neurons. And you can see this picture, those little micro chemicals that are bouncing back and forth from the neurons, that's acetylcholine. So if you can think, if you have more of those signals and that response mechanism, you're gonna have quicker transmission of information throughout the body. And that's part of how this works. So again, acetylcholine is a chemical messenger between neurons, increasing acetylcholine strengthens attention, memory, and problem solving. Not only that, but a dihexa has the ability to form new spines and enhances current spine growth. The head of the spine or the, the neuron head right there, it grows bigger and it grows more of them. So that's another big development with this compound. So the biological changes that happen, so dendritic spines serve as storage of synaptic strength and help transmit electrical signals throughout neurons in the body. These spines are where acetylcholine sent across activating a signal and response. Having more spines and increased growth of those spines will affect all aspects of the brain and the body. And you can see in this graphic, the more spines you have, the larger spines there are, the more communication that occurs. It's um, something you could think of as upgrading your computer. 
You have an older computer and you put a new CPU in it, a new RAM chip, so to speak, and you've got a brand new computer that's way faster than it was before, uh, operating much quicker, has more, more memory. This is basically what your brain is doing when you learn. If you learn a new language, you learn a guitar, you learn piano, you're opening up and developing new neuron spines within your brain, and that is then opening up new pathways, and that's why you're able to do it much quicker. Once you learn how to do it, you become proficient in it. The, de the development of the brain has happened. Well, we have now learned that this can be enhanced chemically. So if this is potentially a, a side effect of dihexa, I mean, this is a game changer. Who doesn't want to become smarter? Who doesn't want to have more motivation, more creativity, more ability to learn faster and hold on to that, that information and enhance your life? That better your career, put better position in your in your career. So who wouldn't want that option? I certainly would. I mean, if I could be more creative and quicker in terms of my thinking and retain more information, it would help anyone at any time in their life. So this certainly could be a game changer and really enhancing people's performance overall. So the data out there, NDX1017 is the oral form of dihexa. Currently, it was renamed to ATH1017 by Athera Pharma 2019, and that's the compound that they're doing clinical studies with, trying to bring it to market for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease treatment. In a rat model of cognitive dysfunction induced by scopopalamine, dihexa treatment given through ICV cannula significantly improved cognitive performance measured by the Morris water maze. It's this maze that they're trying to look for this latency floating raft, so to speak, and, it, and once they poison the brains of these rats, they're able to show the cognitive improvement by giving them dihexa. This was a big improvement. They took a hypocampal neuron culture and showed that five days of dihexa increased the number of spines by nearly threefold and also the spines grew the growth and the head width of the spine also was dramatically increased both of those again is back to what we spoke about earlier in terms of the spine growth and spine numbers is going to enhance your brain enhance the cognitive functions Researchers wrote in 2013 that dihexa was seven orders of magnitude, basically 10 million times stronger than BDNF. And as we know, BDNF is brain-derived nootropic factor. That's the brain improvement from working out, eating whole food diet, getting rid of sugars, getting rid of uh, toxic fats and trans fats. All of those things are neurotoxic bdnf is neuroprotective and it really is enhanced by exercise and weight bearing exercise again sugar and toxic fats go against that so if it's 10 million times stronger than bdnf i think we're onto something big here unfortunately fda status is it's made illegal it's a banned substance like bpc 157 they say there's no the safety data and it is part of the 17 peptide banned list um some of them to mention uh, ghk copper bpc 157 cjc ipm aralin selang cmax tb500 motc this is basically a full list of the 17 peptides that have been made illegal to buy and to sell as human consumption you can still buy them as research grade and uh, acquire them and that sort of thing, as long as they're research grade, but not for human consumption. Only available through research companies as research grade peptides. FDA says it has not identified any human exposure data, meaning there's no safety data, no, there's no efficacy of dihexa for humans, and that's still up in the air. So because there's no data, they can't say that it's safe. So because Big Brother is really worried about our health, they get involved and say, no, I can't take that because it might help you. But don't worry, you can go drink that alcohol and just smoke those cigarettes. That's fine. But dihexa, no, no. Anyways, uh, until there are human studies and until other companies spend a ton of money testing these things, this is going to be the current status of these peptides, which it is what it is for the time being. 
So reported benefits, these are anecdotal benefits. These are some of the things that I read through studies that people have done on their own. Dihexa increases mental stamina, improves problem solving skills, manages depression, boosts memory, increases alertness without stimulation effect like caffeine or other ADHD medications like Adderall. Mental alertness, focus, ability to concentrate, problem solving skills increased within minutes of administrating the peptide. Memory and clarity are also reported by many biohackers, may reverse neurological damage induced by Alzheimer's disease, dementia, or Parkinson's. Most of the animal trials see dramatic improvements with similar cognitive degeneration diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. Some quoted, some quotes from biohackers that have taken this stuff. The ability to process um, information efficiently, huge boost in reflexes, faster reaction time, better problem solving skills, increased verbal fluency, recovered cognitive performance following a depressive episode, enhanced creativity, social awkwardness diminished. Uh, anxiety and depression disappeared alongside noticeable improvements in mental endurance. I also saw things in terms of uh, creativity, the drive, the passion for life, and some other things like just being able to talk to new people. So let's get into some negative side effects. Short duration studies with dihexa have shown really no toxicity level. Biohackers that have taken it for like 14 days, these are some noticeable side effects that, that are not the best. Increased autistic-like hyperfocus, so it's kind of a little too much. No effects if not cognitive action, meaning, so if you're not thinking, if you're not cognitively active, if you're not thinking, you're not gonna notice really anything, very little to no minor effects, if nothing, when you're not really using your brain. Rise in attention deficit, possible increase in water retention, headache, but that's, you know, that's kind of like life. The lack of meaningful response to using dihexa. Again, the biggest downfall is people that don't really see an, uh, an effect, meaning are they really challenging their brain? And if so, do they really see a response? So if they're just sitting around doing nothing, watching TV, you're not gonna notice anything. Also, I've seen a dose dependent reaction so those that are not seeing results may not be taking enough because the rat study showed a dose dependent reaction, meaning the more they gave, the better they got. I think there's a diminishing return, but there is a point at which you need to take a, diff a little more or a different amount to get your desired response. Some studies showed no effect with healthy rats, meaning there was cognitive deficient rats that were treated with scopopalamine and they had great influences with dihexa. And then the rats that didn't have any treatment with that compound, meaning they didn't have cognitive decline, they didn't have any effects of dihexa. But those studies were not designed that way. So it was more of uh, whether dihexa would treat cognitive impairment, not healthy rats. So I think the study would have to be redone in order to truly iron that out, whether it would work for healthy rats and not cognitive decline only. Lack of physical exercise, obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, lack of participation in mental stimulating activities, smoking are also just a few things that you can think about that will cause mild cognitive impairment, over a certainly over a lifetime. So with those people out there that already have mild impairment, Dihexa could be a big improvement for them if they're going to challenge their brain and try to not only help their mental system, but physical system as well, meaning clean up your diet, get rid of sugar, eat whole foods, start working out, and potentially supplement with dihexa. There may be a different outcome. Dosing protocol, all over the map. I've seen all kinds of different people taking different amounts, but the most prevalent is between five milligrams and 20 milligrams taken daily as needed. Some take it for a couple weeks, one to two weeks at a time, and then they take it a couple of weeks off. Some people take it on when they need it. So if they have a meeting or if they have something that they're gonna be really challenged or they're gonna be performing something or doing a presentation, they'll take it for a couple of days prior to that meeting. Um, I've seen all the way up to 45 milligrams per day 
but the average is five to 20 milligrams per day for about a one to two week period. And then you have an off, off period as well. Again, most cycles are one to two weeks reported. Uh, reports indicate that you can see a benefit within 20, 30 minutes of first administration. You can take it through subcutaneous injections, which is the dried peptide bottle that you reconstitute with bacteriostatic water. There's also skin cream and there's also pills that are bioavailable because you can take it in the NDX or ATH 1017 form. So there's three different ways you can take it. Final thoughts. Dihexa is very tempting. It's not gonna be any human safety data released anytime soon. So if you're willing to sacrifice the fact that you don't really know what's gonna happen in the future, it really doesn't look like there's gonna be any more toxicity like other peptides, but we really don't know. So, but the benefits really are exciting to think about. Better memory, better learning, quicker learning, more motivation, more creativity, all of those things I could really take as much as I can get. And especially with something else I want to talk about is a stacking protocol with other peptides. And there's other peptides that they say are very similar to it, maybe not as directly cognitive beneficial, but peptides like Cellank, CMAX, also BPC-157 has a cognitive improvement, NMN, NAD, oxytocin. These are all different peptides that we can try and see if they have any benefit to us and report back. So I think at this point, I need some little more hands-on knowledge and then I'll do another video on how it worked and how it affected me once I get it, but we'll see. Hopefully it does something and, and it improves my output of videos, my quality of videos and my creativity. If it does, I'll let you know. So until then, please subscribe, hit that like button, comment below. I appreciate the time. Hopefully you learned something. My name is Todd Derry. This is TD's Fat to Fit. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon.